I spent the last month analyzing 12 of Metro Boomin's most iconic beats and found he consistently uses an extremely simple formula that delivers results every time. It's like a copy and paste, I swear. So it left me thinking, is he even good at music or has he just perfected this simple formula? Let's start by looking at the melody of Niagara Falls by Travis Scott. This sounds really good, but how did they come up with these notes? Like do you just hop on a piano and randomly hit notes until this comes out? Do you simply hear this in your head and slowly struggle to turn that into MIDI? Well I'm here to tell you that's not how you do it at all. To be able to consistently make melodies like this you need to learn a three step process. The first step can be easily found in the melody behind Ric Flair Drip by Offset. This melody is composed essentially of a call and response effect, where this part is a call and this is a response. If we divide them as such, we can see that the call uses these four notes and the response these four notes. Now immediately I'm able to figure out that these chords are the classic 1-4 hip hop chords. So to make this melody, Metro didn't just start from zero, they started off with an already well known chord progression. Don't believe me? Let's look at another call and response melody produced by Metro. If we grab the exact 1-4 chords from Ric Flair Drip, we can see it fits exactly, again. Now in both this melody and Ric Flair Drip, we have a few notes outside the chords. We'll get to them in a bit, don't worry. So the first thing we need to learn to make melodies for Metro is one, the three Metro Booming chord progressions. So what are them? Well for that you need a quick music theory lesson. It's gonna be super short, I swear. You see, to make a melody, first you need to choose a scale. In hip hop, that scale is usually the natural minor scale. And that looks like this for the A minor scale. What people don't teach you about scales is that you're not supposed to see them as letters, but rather as numbers. This is not an A, this is a 1, as in the first note of the A scale. This is not a B, this is a 2, as in the second note of the A scale. And so on until 7. And from here we have another A, so you can either call it a 1 or an 8, and so on. Well now, to find the metro booming chord progressions in here, we need chords. Lucky for you, once you see the notes as numbers, finding the chords becomes pretty easy. Let's say we want a 1 chord. All we have to do for that is count in 3s. So we start on 1, 1, 2, 3 note, and 1, 2, 3 note. And that's it, we have a 1 chord. For a 4 chord, same process. We start on 4, 1, 2, 3 note, 1, 2, 3 note. And done, a 4 chord. The 1, 4 is actually one of the three metro booming chord progressions. So now you know how to find it. We can simply add them to our piano roll, invert this note down, and arpeggiate. And all of a sudden, we found how Ric Flair Drip was made. And where do these other notes come from? Well, these are simply what we call passing tones, which are notes from our scale that are not part of our chords. And Metro uses them all the time in his melodies. And with that, our theory lesson is over. Now we can take a look at all three Metro Booming chord progressions. Now you already know number two, which is chords one, four. The way these chords are applied can be very different. For example, Ric Flair Drip simply moves the top note of this four chord down, keeping the jump between notes as small as possible. while type shit does the same. It can also be wider, like how this song does it. For that, you start with the standard 1-4, but instead of simply inverting this note down, you invert these two down, and double this one octave down. How you invert the notes depends on what effect you're going for. For example, for guitar melodies like Lock On Me, you usually want to keep that jump in chords. So they simply inverted these notes down, which allowed them to keep this jump in notes. Out of the 12 I analyzed, I found 6 that use chords 1-4. And again, the way you choose to invert the notes have a lot to do with comparing what others have done before you and your own experimentation. There are no rules set, but usually the most common inversion is this specific one. So if you want to start somewhere, start here. The other progressions in this list have a very similar process to the 1-4. All of them include a 1 chord in a 2 chord repetition. That's because the 1 chord has a feeling of home, which is really important when you're dealing with as much tension as hip-hop does. And the repetition is because repeating helps you get that dark sound. That was a really short 
art theory lesson. So of course I left a ton of knowledge out and didn't explain some things thoroughly enough. If you want to not only know the basics, but also know exactly what makes music work for others and how to make it work for you too, I made a video course that teaches you everything you need to know. Link in the description and there's a free version too. Anyway, so that's the second chord progression. And once you start seeing the way they apply the other two progressions, you start to wonder if Metro is actually that good at music or if he just knows these formulas by heart. Take for example number one, which uses chords one, two. Here's how they were used in Fright by Future. It's basically an up and down arpeggio that uses some extra notes from the scale as passing tones. Or see how number three was used in Bank Account by 21 Savage, which is chords 1-5. For this one, they extended the one chord to be three beats long and used what's called a sus4 chord, which basically means moving the middle note one scale note up, increasing its tension. But beyond that, the shape was applied as usual. Which brings us to step number two, how does Metro apply these chords? So when you're listening to Metro's beats passively, it's hard to notice a pattern between the songs. However, when you're looking at them all at once, it becomes easy to see that Metro loves a good ascending or descending arpeggio. We can see it in Fried, Lock On Me, We Don't Trust You, Too Many Nights, and more. It can even be seen in melodies I found that were not using the basic hip hop process, like Ghostface Killers, or Ice Attack. So the second thing we need to be able to make music like Metro is know to add an ascending or descending arpeggio. But that's not all. Metro actually uses three different main processes for melodies, and only one of them is a simple ascending or descending arpeggio. I mentioned that for melodies like Ghostface Killers or Ice Attack, that Metro didn't use the basic hip hop process for them. So what does that mean? The basic hip hop process essentially means that you choose your chords, invert them however you like, and then, using those exact notes, you add an arpeggio. That's what the basic process is. Now that is the process for this part here, but for this one, it's different. Here, you don't only add your chords and invert them how you like. Here, you actually make a two-level melody. That means that the inverted chords will be used as the lower level of the melody, and for the top level, you can get more creative freedom. You use this part in roughly the same way you did the part below, following mainly the same notes as in your chords. But because you already have this lower part to establish the tone of the melody, you can use this top part as more of an interesting counter melody that does not have to be so simple anymore. You can use it for a simple descending arpeggio, if you want. Or a sort of a call and response effect, where the call is the lower level and the response is the upper one. And with that, we're left with the last one, which is just to play the chords. This one is by far the more complex one to analyze because there is no real identifiable rule here. The process is to grab your chords and essentially just play around until they sound how you want. We can see it in Umbrella, for example. Also in Raindrops. and even with a lead in Like That by Future and Kendrick. Okay, so now you know the first step, which is the three Metro Booming chord progressions. You also know the second step, which is the three biggest ways to apply those chords. So now we're left with step three, the last thing we need to be able to fully make Metro Booming worthy melodies, and that is the sound selection. I am right now working on a deep analysis of Metro Booming sound selection and what makes a sample worthy of its cosine. So let me know in the comments what songs I should include for this analysis, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the video when it comes out. And in the meantime, you'll learn today three basic hip hop chord progressions and three 
three ways they could be used. However, there's still so much more you need to know to be able to consistently get the sound you want. This video today was me teaching you a bit about how music theory is used in modern music. So if you want to stop guessing your way around music and finally take control, I spent years making a video course that will teach you everything you need to know about it, in the simplest and most easy to follow way possible, so you'll be able to follow it even if you're a beginner. I also made a completely free version so you can check if my style of teaching is right for you, so if that sounds like something you want, click the first link in the description. And if by the time you're seeing this the sound selection video is already out, you can watch it here. And if not, I'll just tag something else in the meantime. That's it, see ya!